Alrighty. Thanks for joining. It's a pleasure to have you here. Today's coffee sponsor is Dante Healy. And you can find him on his podcast, Business Breaks, here on YouTube. Where his biggest um, uh, podcast was one with me. How delightful. A reference photo today is again by Pre-Illumination Seth. And uh, here's the details coming up of the uh, tools and paper and what have you. So uh, Pam Pastel uh, painting today. And uh, we're starting with what's sometimes called the dead layer. It's uh, just charming, isn't it? The dead layer. And uh, give me a moment. I'll just pour myself a coffee. And uh, then I'll come join you. And we'll just uh, pop up on the screen um, instead of the, the reference photo for a little bit. There we are. Good to see you. So, uh, the dead layer, yes, uh, charming. So, um, and if my eyes are, are tracking just not straight at the camera, it's, it's um, just watching the monitor in front of me. Um, that surreal moment as you watch yourself at work um, at 10 times your normal speed. So, uh, the dead layer, um, I'm using neutral greys. Um, with the pan pastels, uh, three sets of grey. So the uh, mid tone, which is just the the pure neutral grey, as is, no light or dark added to it. And then um, a light tone, uh, uh, which we call a tint. And then um, I'll also have the extra dark. And really, this is um, just bringing in the values and uh, mapping out the the picture i mean you have well, i always have guidelines so i've got my initial um, drawing and i'm going to be filling in the blanks <laughs> but to fill in the blanks i'm going to put a lot of other blanks on top and in this particular painting i've been uh, just experimenting with a, a different way of doing uh, portraits which is uh, by layers so I'm just putting uh, one layer on top of another and uh, we'll talk about some some reasons why that that's got such um, nice resonance with life as well uh, later on um, but for the moment I just need to sip my coffee for a sec It's only the second one of my day, and um, what's the time? The time is, oh my word, it's 20 past 11 in the morning. I should be on to my third. Well, we all have uh, difficulties in life, don't we? So, uh, the greys are, are laying the foundation to, to let me uh, know where to go in this uh, particular painting. But maybe, you know, you've... I thought I'll give you a, a bit of a glimpse into my studio here. My studio is in fact my um, garage. The car's parked outside and uh, here I am on a workbench. I kind of spend my life in the garage because my home office is uh, here as well, um, which is where I'm sitting right now and uh, some of the previous artworks uh, behind me. And um, so if you're here from LinkedIn, this is the this is the spot where I'm typing my acerbic little comments from. Uh, and uh, here in here in my home office, my my older son hangs out with me as well. He's got a uh, desk just to the right of me, and uh, his workstation. He's into. Um, 3D printing at the moment. My word. Well, it's creative. Um, but what a noise that thing makes. So it's nice to be able to do this uh, video and uh, voiceover while he's at work. Uh, so my studio. Um, the paper towels are for cleaning um, 
my little uh, pen pestle applicators uh, which are known as soft tools funny little play on words because they are soft little sponges micro sponges um, designed specifically for uh, pan pestle and while they're um, um, plastic they're not disposable it's not like you know you're going on a picnic with your plastic knife and fork and you toss them away afterwards you hang on to those for ages they're they're very sturdy and, and uh, last the distance. The sponges, um, depending on the surface and how hard you push, can last quite a long time. When I first started using them, I found I was pushing quite hard um, with the applicator. And um, I don't know whether it was nerves or just didn't really know how to use it. But you only need a light touch. Um, they pick up the, the pan pastel very easily. It's quite tempting to scrape it like like paint or something and you know, or getting butter. And you're like, oh, I gotta load this thing up. That's not how it works. You only need a little bit. You will find you constantly sort of dabbing back and forth. Oh look, here we go. That's a good reminder for me to just have another coffee myself. So uh, we're on to the next layer. The um, there's a special French name which I've promptly got and forgotten for um, Vidachi, maybe? Something like that. Um, for the green layer. And it's designed um, to... Uh, of course, green is a complement of red. So it's just going to make the, the painting um, have some zing when, it, uh, when it's completed. You really... I've, you don't have to. This is the great thing about art. Right. There's no must. There's no you have to do it in a particular way with art. Art is freedom. You know, there's no process you must follow. This isn't like going to work and someone says, no, no, this is the best practice. This is the way we must do it here. Art is like, nah, and just do what I want and of course you'll get a different result you know if you're just completely experimental you, you can discover some great things but you probably should take a note of what you are experimenting I've got this great story about a friend older gentleman and um, he was one of the very first people to discover genetic coding and if you've heard the story, it's okay, it's a good story. I'm going to say it again because um, I've got a lot of uh, affection for this uh, friend of mine. And so he he discovered um, by accident um, how to do genetic marking, you know, what the code was looking like. But he looked at it and he went, it wasn't the result he was looking for. And so he talks to his boss and, and says, you know, this is this is what's happened. Who's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. disaster. Do it again. <laughs> Six months later, someone releases a paper on exactly the same method this man had done to do genetic coding, how to find the, the DNA markers. And, um, and he ended up getting the Nobel Prize. So um, the moral of the story is, is experiment. Have happy accidents, as um, who was it, Bob Ross used to say. There's no mistakes, it's just happy accidents. Well, just make sure you make a note of how you achieve that happy accident so you're able to do it again later on. Uh, but the great thing with that is you, you've got freedom. And I think that, that that's one of the things that um, I wanted to talk today about that um, holds a lot of people back from being creative because they're so used to being restricted. They're so used to being told, no, I must do it this way. This is why, you know, one of the biggest ways to make money in this world 
Are you ready for it? It's training. Telling people how to do things. Because people seem to love to be told how to do it. Rather than just experiment and discover for themselves. So while I'm showing you what I'm doing, it's totally up to you as to how you want to do it, whether you want to follow it. Um, ideally, I should write a book and have a training course and make lots of money. You know, and, oh, look, we're onto a, a third layer here. A permanent red. So we, we've, you see, I've, we've come out of the zombie stage. Um, <laughs> that permanent green. We went from the, the dead layer into the undead layer. And now we're putting some um, some blood, some life into the into the poor couple. And don't worry about the the strength of um, the pigment. I'm I'm using the pure pigment there, permanent red, uh, not a tone. And um, it's all gonna it's all gonna blend in later on. All the colours are gonna work. I've learned you just drop it on and um, it, it will blend in, in later. Um, but this is, as I was saying, that um, what restrains us from art is often fear. We're afraid of doing it wrong. But in art, there isn't actually anything wrong. You've got the freedom to just express yourself. You know, people can say, oh, I don't like the look of that. You know, if you tape a banana to a wall, there's going to be people who go, that's not art. But, you know, look, if you get paid for it, fantastic. Um, but fear, you know, there's this amazing, um, amazing bit of wisdom that I came across years ago, and I've still remembered it. It's from the Bible, actually. It just says, fear acts as a restraint. And you go, well, that's a life lesson, isn't it? Fear does act as a, as a restraint. It holds us back. And uh, that happens in, in life all over the place. You see it in business. People won't take risks. Um because they're afraid of what might happen in relationships. You know, they're afraid to ask someone to um, enter a relationship. They're afraid they'll get rejected. And rejection acts as a restraint, isn't it? That's like the massive fear. None of us like being rejected. Someone turning around and saying, oh, I don't like you, or I don't like what you've done. Um, but, sorry if you can hear an aeroplane buzzing overhead. I live near an airport and normally we don't get them where I am but clearly today that pilot is off course. <laughs> I'm not sure whether I'm going to redo this recording or not but if you can hear that plane clearly I decided you know what I'm just going to stick with this um, this voiceover. Here's my zombies. I came in late at night into the studio and I saw the couple in the dark and I grabbed my phone and took a photo because I thought I need to remind myself that even at the, the early stages woohoo, coffee time even at the early stages a painting can start to look like it's, it's coming together you see I've got a, um, a long sleeve top on and now because um, I don't know what happened to the weather, but autumn decided to just give up and go straight to winter. And uh, as I said, my studio's in the garage. Uh, it can get pretty chilly. So I'm using a diary lied. I think that's how you say it. Diary lied. I always say dairy lied, but we're going to try it with the right one. Diary lied yellow now. And it's very sunny and warm. And... Um, and these layers that are going on, you'll see I'm, I'm just doing it. So we did the we did the dead layer, we did the zombie layer, so we had the undead layer, and then, then we put some, some red in. Um, and you can do whichever one you want first after that. And then I'm, I'm putting the yellow on, and then the next video that's going to come, there'll be more 
blue and then there's going to be green and then there's going to be the lights and the darks and I'm just building up by layer. Now the reason I wanted to talk about that is that so often in life we try and do everything at once and it's, it just overwhelms us. I used to have this in the um, place I worked. So many people got made redundant. You might be in that situation. You, you, your whole team gets dispersed. We had a team of 20 and um, eventually it was me and the boss left. It was just, I was hopeless. So I'm doing all these different roles, running all these different um, this product manager. So I had all these different services I was looking after. And I, I worked out, look, I've just got to get one good thing done a day. The, I can't do it all. But the, the thing that I concentrate on, if I get that right, that's, that's it. And we're coming to the end of the video now, so I hope I've got this video um, right. You can see me in real time now. And uh, you see, it's a very gentle process, just light touches. Here I am, 10 times slower than what you've been watching through the rest of the, um, the video. Just gentle touches, subtle. Such a beautiful medium pastel. I really, really enjoy it. There we go. That's the theme of our topic today. When the heart ignores fear, art appears. Thanks for being with me. See you again.